Okay. What benefits are there for working over doing crime? Yeah, there's no shadow of a doubt. The biggest benefit we'll say to this is that your money is halal, it's permissible and it's blessing. A lot one thing that a lot of the people underestimate is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings is on something, then it, it, you can't comprehend the reality of the blessings that you have, you know. So in terms of meeting your Lord and your Mulkiyama and him accepting you know the good deeds that you have done which were halal and the reward of it we can't comprehend the reward because the reward is something that no eyes have seen no ears have heard it's something that we can't we can't fathom so sometimes we underestimate it because we're in a society where it's now it's here and now you know what i'm saying people don't believe in what they can't see so in terms of it's, it's, the, it's the same as achieving money if man does something man wants to see the money here and now nobody wants to hear that okay like you're saying that you know the people they see their reality in terms of their what they gain so they'll go down the haram route um, just to attain what they want to attain because they need it now and also there's a lot of um, society pressures around them why some Muslims choose to do that because not everybody that is seeking that haram money has the same circumstance you know, everyone's circumstances are different. We're not here to throw a blanket over everyone and say, look, you're all in the same circumstance, but the end goal is the same. It's haram. You know, one man might be doing it because he's just, he don't give a damn. Next man, he, he, he's down on his face. He feels like if he doesn't do it, then it's going to be something even worse. So there's different circumstances, but the end goal is the money's haram. And there's no barakah, there's no benefit in it. So there's no shadow of a doubt. Just the most important thing is, a halal living has blessings that we cannot comprehend. free ticket to basically just do zina, 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 they can go nightclubs, do whatever they want. What are some of the negative uh, effects that you could tell the brother of living this lifestyle? What things, what like negative things can you give them to deter them from A lot. Life? This lifestyle, um, it has, what one thing this lifestyle does is that it, it, um, it makes the brothers um, damaged. There's a lot of brothers that are damaged because of this style style. Well, I mean, what do I mean by that? They expect certain things from a woman and a wife which is damaging to a human being. It's just because of their part, past experiences and they don't seem to see themselves as damaged individuals. You know we get this a lot of these sisters are damaged. They've been through a lot. They're nuts. Every minute they're changing their heart mind. Heart broken heart. Yeah, they're broken heart. heart. These sisters are broken. They're long. They we get a lot of the sisters are broken, but a lot of the brothers are broken individuals due to this lifestyle, and that it darkens the heart. Also, on top of that, it, it, it's they don't know how to keep a relation with a woman. You know, they expect certain they things. They just have the sexual side. Yeah, they have the sexual side. So now they expect certain things from our Muslim sisters, which which is just this is not acceptable you know what i'm saying and they and they want and they see them in a certain way and a see and they want to treat them in a certain light due to all these mad experiences they've had of committing zina and getting the maddest experiences from these girls on the road that are nasty and are on what they're on so now they get married and they're broken they don't know how to be soft with the woman and, yeah. and to they you know to, have to, have to be gentle they don't have to so be have having for zina yeah so alone for me that alone is something which is massive that gets old overlook that a lot of men that just commit peers in are broken individuals in how to deal with women so now sometimes when they come to marriage you see they're going through so many divorces you know they've been divorced here been divorced here but it's like ah, oh, that sister was mashed up this is so yeah, all the sisters you married are mashed up there's nothing wrong with you you're all right no one seems to see you as a broken you're just a bad man <laughs> <laughs> nothing really wrong with you so i that's say from, yeah so i say from from the zina alone that the brothers are committing relentlessly it makes them not know how to have a good relationship with a woman and our Muslim sisters and, and that is something that's detriment to when they have children you know and building an Islamic household and Allah knows best.
brother to be a rapper and have albums everywhere, tunes everywhere to be big and famous. The evils of any type of music per se, I would say, is sometimes within music itself is what comes with music. You know, the things that come with music are bad enough for you to understand that music is something that has a lot of branches. You know, it's not just music per se, no, let's deal with the individual. Then we can deal with the individual where he's, music is not hard out in what he says. There's people out there, they don't, what they, their message is not they haram. haram, but you mean it's not. Yeah, I mean, like, in terms of their message might not be haram, but now the strings, the, the, what makes the music, the instruments, the strings, and that's haram. So an individual might say, well, my message is positive. But now your message is, is on top of something with the strings, the instruments, and then around that, there's things that now that come with that. That sometimes you lie in your message. Sometimes there's shirking your message. Sometimes there's glorification of haram in your message in terms of girlfriends and boyfriends. So there's so many strings that come from it because people always try to jump from one ship to the other ship. Uh, okay, my mine is positive, but okay, let's forget that. What is involved in the whole structure of of being a musician and being someone that does music. There's so many things, the environments you perform this music is haram. Mm -hmm. Now, so there's so many things that make music as a as a profession haram. You know, to just leave it alone. Not alone that we, as Muslims, we understand it to be haram and all of that with the, with the evidences and the proofs, but within the profession itself as an individual, say you was a Muslim, even as an individual, as a profession, there's so many things which are un unacceptable in society where you wouldn't do anywhere else but just in the profession of music. Yeah. You know, where else in society would a man just have models that's butt naked all over it? You know what I'm saying? That would be uh, accepted. This is all in the profession of music. So we'll say again, within its profession, leave it alone. benefits are there of being a wife over a girlfriend what's a girlfriend with a boy like what is it that's this what I'm saying. Is vague. it's vague and that's what it is you're just a girl that's his friend and he says hello to you this day he says hello to you the other day and then one day Friday Saturday whatever day you lot link up you do your thing and that's it so don't expect no more when you start expecting more now you're expecting things of this man that only a wife should expect you're thinking, why isn't he here on these days? He should be with me all the time. He should contact me. Why aren't he ringing me? This is what a wife gets. You don't get this. You're just his friend. You know what I'm saying? So what is it that you want? So sisters Cinema, want to chicken and chips. Yeah, they want. That's it's long Nando's, isn't it? So you know, the definition of a girlfriend is just that, a girl that's a friend. <laughs> and that's the reality of it. So that's all you are. You're, you know, you're just a friend of his and a friend with benefits, so they'll say. So there is no no real you know connection between the two of you whereas a wife then again you look at the definition of a wife then that should be enough for you to understand what the you know the attributes and uh, and what it entails for an individual to be a wife or for a sister to be a wife that alone should be enough for you to to understand the benefits of it the definition of the two words of a girlfriend and a wife should be enough for a person to know that i don't want to be a girlfriend you know, if you have any value, self-value and respect for yourself, you don't want to be any man's girlfriend. You don't be, mind being a girlfriend of a girl, your friends, and that's it. But when you become a girlfriend of a man, you're friends with him with benefits. You know what I'm saying? So there's no benefit for you to just be friends with any man as a Muslim. And all he's doing is just committing haram. All you're doing is committing haram together. And there's no benefit in that girlfriend relationship that you have with him. The best relationships that girls have with friends are with other girls, where they're friends, they study together, they learn together, they, they grow together in their Islam, and they benefit each other. But this term girlfriend is just some funny term.
sister who's going uh, like non Muslim school or college and so forth, and she's already started to take off her job and she's obviously mixing with these other girls and hearing them talk about they went to cinema with this boy or that. As for our young sisters, there's no shadow of a doubt, and for our women, you know, including our wives and that, is that the media you know, attacks them on every level in terms of film, in terms of adverts, in terms of productivity and the products that they sell, in terms of merchandising, everything. A lot of these things today are sold by women, are advertised by women, are aimed at women, and there's a lot of pressure on to be like something that is not really real, it's not a reality. We see it all the time on the news, you know, they're talking about these size zeros and things like that that don't really exist. You know, but we keep on seeing them in our newspapers, in our magazines, on TV. So they're getting fed an image which they're trying to now live up to. And this image doesn't just start with the clothing and the how you look and how you dress it. And also in terms of, in terms of your lifestyle. You know, because within the TV programs, we were speaking about this, um, me and Abu Bakr on, on one of the programs that we were doing. And we were saying that in terms of how you live your life, you learn this from the TV. So the sisters that are watching TV programs, whether it be EastEnders and Coronation Street, they're likes of these soaps, and they're seeing how young girls interact and how young girls live their life. Uh -huh. So they're thinking like, this is how I should be. This is fun. This is where. This is how you have fun by going out with your friends, by going clubbing, by going to cinema, by having boyfriends and girlfriends. They're seeing the world around them, um, the world around them, like um, like continue to live why they feel they're not living. You know, they turn on the TV, the girls are living. And what do they call by living? They're going out, they got boyfriend, they got girlfriend, and they just in the house. Kind of tweak it with that which is permissible from the Quran and Sunnah and allow sisters to have a more of a of a position within the house and an importance and a, 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 and a level of freedom which is accepted within Islam, you know what I mean, so that they feel like they're doing stuff because if they feel like they're properly locked off away from society and they can't live as they see what they call is living then they're going to go to that extreme of to live what they see what TV is. With things like a lot of study circles and study making, a home, circle. making a big library in the home and lectures. Things like that, sisters get together, they go to study circles like you said, they have coffee mornings, they have tea, you know, they, they, they sit down, they go through things, they have a social life community. within yeah can be within there with the sisterhood so they can talk about you know issues that will concern them as women and, and they're up again in terms of studying what they're going to study what career they would like to take you know in terms of what they would like to see for themselves in the future where they yeah, because we know that we have many you know women scholars within our religion that were educated and they used to teach the men and you know so we know that the reality of, of, of a woman being educated is massive so within which is permissible from Islam there's a lot of things for them to do and for them to kind of socialize so they don't feel like they're missing out because you can't tell them to leave something off if you don't provide them with another act. Hey brother who's from a good working you know family who has a loving mother and so forth and he's really into music and uh what's it um music videos and movies and stuff and the uh, gang life is looking tempting to him um and gradually gradually his friends the people he's making friends with are on that life and he's gradually get, getting into it what advice you have a man like you said he, he, he's in a good family uh he's you know he's got good people around him but he's choosing to follow he's choosing to be this wannabe he's choosing to be this he's choosing to live someone else's life that's not his life and he's not built for that someone like that then you got a kind of catch these individuals early while they're still trying to portray a life that they're not really living and they're not really about that and sit them down and kind of remind them of what they do have but like you said that one that wants to be the wannabe then he's someone that you got to advise him and really show him what you do have you have that nice family structure you have parents that are practicing the religion you have parents that care for you you have brothers and sisters and you have this night you have this tight you know ship family network that provides and look after you and, and are there to help you so you don't need to be like the man that doesn't have nothing 
You know, you don't need to act like that. So my thing is to remind an individual because, like we know, the reminder benefits the believer and it's only sometimes when something is said to you and reminded to you that you can contemplate on what you do have and then you can keep it moving, you feel me? Which is awesome. Okay. Yeah.